Hi everyone, Blake Jones here. In this episode of How Do You Do That, we're going to look at the new version of the Dehancer OpenFX plugin for DaVinci Resolve. The Dehancer OpenFX plugin is a very powerful film emulation plugin that can be added to the system. It gives fantastic effects and new features have been added in this latest version. If you want to try it out yourself, you can download it directly from the Dehancer website, or if you want to buy it, take advantage of the link in the comments below and you'll get 10% off the purchase price. So let's have a look and see how it works. And now what we're going to do here is I've got a shot that just has a standard grade. I apply my second node, go to my OpenFX plugins, roll down to the bottom, and there we have Dehancer Pro version 7.1.0. This is currently in beta, but I found that it's working extremely well. Drag that into the node. Now what Dehancer does first is it allows you to select your input source. So you can change this to Rec 2020, Rec 709. You can change it to film log, intermediate, anything like this you can change. In this situation, let's leave it in Rec 709. As you can see, if you select it from a like Apple Gamma 2.0, you'll see the difference there. Let's just leave it at 709. And then you have here um, exposure compensation that can be changed. Temperature can be changed as well. And you can also reset these. And also you can keyframe them as well too. Now the next thing we want to do is check our film developer if we want to do contrast boost, gamma correction, color separation, or color boost. In order to do these, you have to enable them first. And then after that, you can then come in and do your contrast boost and things like this that can be added. Now, if we come down here, as you can see, we have a bit of a color change in this area because we're looking at Kodak Vision 3 250D, or you can change it to Kodak Portra, and then you can change it to all the various ones here. We've also got Lomochrome, Polaroid, Roly, Fuji Color, Fuji Chrome, Agfa Color, Agfa Chrome, all these things that can be changed in this area. Now, if you don't want to use a film emulation for this, then you can turn this off. And now we just have the standard color grade that's been done there. Now, if I come over here, I can come to film compression. So I can change, if I turn this on, I can change my compression, as you can see in the highlights. And then you can change white point on this. So you can see it's affecting in the windows there. And then tonal range, you can change the whole thing like this. Color density can be changed at this point as well. Now, if we come over to expanding, you can now expand the black point, or you can reset this like so, and then you can change it to either normal or luma. Now, if we want to emulate a print of a film, then we can come over and select Kodak Cineon Film Log, as you can see. It'll create a log correction for you. You can select Fuji Print, Kodak Print. And then you have also your variables that can be changed in this area. Now what they've added here, which is very neat, is you've got your color head that can be changed. When I turn this on, I can now come over and change my shadows, mid-tones, highlights, and preserve exposure, for example, things like this. 
and then if I change this, as you can see, move this back and forth, it will change between yellow, blue, magenta, green, and things like this. Yeah. And then if I turn off the gang, then I can do it just for one channel at a time, for example. And then we have our film grain that can be added to the picture. It gives a very lifelike emulation for various types of film grain. So let's say if I want 8 millimeter ISO 500, I can do this here and you can see if I zoom into the picture, I can see if whether it's 500 or 16 millimeter 250 or we've got here 35 millimeter 250, very fine grain there. And then if you can say custom, and then you can come over here. If I say if I want the film type to be um, positive, negative, or analog or noise, for example, can be added. If you want to turn that off, then you can see the film grain is not added at all. Then we also have halation settings here for all the different types of film stocks, even, for example, 65, 70 millimeter, and you can turn that on, and you can amplify the halation in the picture. You don't see too much change there, but it is happening. And then we have bloom control for the various film stocks, film damage, if I turn this on to, let's say, 8 millimeter, and then you play the clip. And then you can give the amount. You can have more damage if you want. And you can bring it up like that. And then you can also disable it if you don't like it, yeah, like so. And then film breathing, for example, you can turn this on for various different film stocks and you can enable this. Also gate weave, whereas uh, gate weave is on, you will see this, for example, let's do an eight millimeter. So we can see something extreme here. So as you can see, the picture is slightly jittering in the gate of the camera. It emulates that and doesn't ex exceptional job for this. Now this is something very new that's been added. You have an overscan function and if you select this one you can select Super 35, uh, gate shape, and you can say the perforation and then the scale, the amount of gate defocus and exposure. So when I turn this on and then we come over here now I can actually see the full gate area and I see the sprockets here. So as you can see, these are neg sprockets. And then if I change this to positive, and if I turn this over to super eight, for example, and if I have it standard 16, Double perf, ultra Panavision 65 millimeter. And as you can see, you can go through and just play it like so. And then if I change this back to <coughs> negative, for example, and it does an exceptional job of that. And let's say if I just want this to be uh, Super 35, for example, I can do it this way too. And then you can also change the exposure here for the sprockets or perfs, depending on what you want to call it. And then we want to turn this off and then we go back to our normal picture size. Now we can also add a vignette into the picture. 
So if I do this, I can then come over here and change the feathering, for example, and do something like this, like so. And then I can change all my aspect ratios and centers and everything there. And then lastly, we have here our monitor, output, LUT generator. We can export a lookup table from here. And then we have our other options here, which is for our quality, license information, check profiles. Now this is an exceptional thing because it's an extremely well engineered OpenFX plugin. So what you do actually is once you install it, click on check profiles and it will optimize the plugin to work with your hardware. And this will assure you that you've got the best performance when you're actually using it. So there we have it. For more information about training services, have a look at the comments below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to my YouTube channel so you can be alerted to all the new upcoming videos. Hope to see you again soon. Thanks a lot for watching.